two really funny guys. They're um they they do a an Aussie podcast. Get oh, out what? of here. They do yeah, there's these two guys. Yeah. The, the podcast is called uh Diary of a Madman. Yeah. And they're basically like two of the biggest Aussie nerds I've ever met. They know literally everything about everything. They're like Aussie scholars. And it was actually a lot of fun. But they're like incredibly passionate about everything you've ever done to, you know. God, they've gone that deep. Oh, they, mom, there's deep. And then these guys were like way, Whoa. way deep. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Diary of the Madman, the ultimate Ozzy Osbourne podcast, where we geek the fuck out about all things Ozzy and all things Ozzy related. I am Josh Kremer with me as always, Mr. Dan Drago. How's it going, Dan? What is up, Josh? How you doing, my man? Doing good, man. I'm literally getting used to this, like, or trying to get used to the video. Because, like, right? I was talking and doing my natural thing. I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot we're recording now. I got to, like, right. You get to see both camera. of our beautiful faces now. Yeah, no doubt, man. I'm actually going to take so, this off. Right on yeah. camera during the can't, show. Can't Fuck see it. your face with that on, Let's man. Let's go. Who needs a pop filter? Oh, man, I popped right shit. away. I got one of those old school 80s ones on here where you just put it over there. Like Jimi Hendrix used to play those big old fuck like that big. He yeah. couldn't even see his face. I love it. Looks like you were doing something else there for a second. <laughs> <It's not gonna> <laughs> <work>. <laughs> Excuse me while I kiss this guy. That's awesome. So anyway, man, how you been, dude? It's been a minute. It has been a minute. So first of all, I want to thank all the listeners and apologize for a slight delay. We've been off for about a month and, you know, with the holidays and some personal commitments, two months, no fucking way. I think we interviewed Jack November 3rd. Are you serious? Yeah. Holy shit. And it's been two yeah. months, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Again, that's on me. I had a lot oh. of things going on in my life and, um, you know, some personal issues. And then on top of that, football has started for me. So once football yeah. starts, unfortunately, it becomes crazy. I also was waiting to buy a new computer. I got a brand new Mac. And look at how beautiful my face looks. You know, instead of looks being in the dark, awesome. I can use my microphone again. I was having major computer problems with the last one. So I'm super excited to be comfortable. I also got a new computer. Look at us. That's Only right. he bought a new Mac for three grand and I paid 300 Black Friday shopping for a S-G-I-N. I don't even know what that is, but <laughs> S -G -I -N it's more, sounds like a B-side of S-I-N. Right? But it's remarkably yeah. better than what I used to have. Yeah. Dude, and I'm going to work on the lighting. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's so much quicker when I – my other one was just ridiculous. So, now we're ready to roll. But, you know, one thing – and most of our listeners, they we've discussed this before on the show with, with some of the delays and stuff. We're, look, we don't sit to a schedule, you know, with something we've talked about early on. And we do this when we have time to do it because we want to keep it fresh and fun for us as much as it is for the listeners. And uh, it just is what it is, dude. It's okay. Don't stress it. I'm not stressing it. You know, we, we do this when we can do it because we want to keep it fresh and fun. And, you know, it is what it is. But in the meantime, we have lavished in the joy of <clears throat> hearing <clears throat> Ozzy and Jack and Sharon discuss our show on their show. How fucking cool is that, man? It was amazing. I mean, I still think I've been riding high for two months. I thought it was a month. That shows how crazy time has gone. But, dude, I am still in awe. And I'm just fucking shocked that that happened, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, getting Jack on along was so huge, but for it to progress to where, you know, days later, a week later, he re he's recording and he wants to make sure he tells you know Ozzy and Sharon about our show and about us. Not to mention the compliments. They said we were funny and that we were you know the nerdiest of the nerd you know <laughs> geeks whatever. And we we eat that shit up. It's like man, that's so fucking cool. And uh, I want to give a shout out to the producer also. Uh, she reached out and was like, hey. Appreciate everything. Love you guys. Glad that Jack brought you up on the show. And they, they've been excellent, like excellent. And uh, we couldn't thank them enough, man. Our numbers has really skyrocketed. Absolutely. And my favorite thing he said was, you know, there's deep and then there's these guys. And, and I think <laughs> yes. that, that should be like the tagline of our show. But, you know, truthfully, A, I'm so grateful that he talked so nice of us, but he, he kind of nailed us, right? Like he 100%. was spot on on who we are 
what we're about. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, Ozzy didn't give much of a reaction. But when I rewatched it about 30,000 times, Ozzy totally is into it. And just that's just the way he is. It's just the way, especially on the show. He, he, yeah. There's times he's really into the show, and there's times you can tell he does not want to be there, I think. Uh, but I think, too, Ozzy had a bit of humbleness, I thought. Almost like, a, oh, yeah, that's nice. Like About me? Why would, why would somebody yeah. do that? You know? right. and, and even Sham was like, really? It's like, what do you mean, why would someone do that? You're like the greatest rock and roller. You're the greatest motherfucker ever to walk the planet in our that's eyes. Right. Like, of course, why would, why would somebody do that? You know, so, but totally awesome. We are riding high from it. We can't thank him enough. And, uh, what an excellent, you know, I think me and Dan really just kind of lavished in that as long as we could, to be honest with you. It's just amazing. Yeah. I mean, we've been getting pressure to follow it up and like, oh, you guys got to strike where the iron's hot and all that. But in reality, for me personally, I wanted that to simmer as long as possible Yeah. because yeah. you can't get better promotion, right? I mean, no. Jack, Sharon, and Ozzy. That, that, I mean, you can't get any better than that. Just, I mean, the thought of listening to those three on a podcast discussing our podcast like, right it, it doesn't seem like real life it's like fuck that's us and i was the first one a, a couple of listeners had messaged overnight i, I think from other countries who had kind of heard it you know and it's like they discuss you guys on the show and i'm like oh shit and i'm like texting you know like dan and ryan like dude like they, they brought us up you know and i found it immediately and it's hard to believe man that's but so fucking cool and like you like we've said we just can't thank them enough yeah absolutely and again Fingers crossed. I still think it's a great shot. We're going to get Ozzy on. I hope so. We'll yeah. see. They, they, they've discussed it. So now, Jack, you all heard it on the show. Jack mentioned it himself three times. So, I mean, we will see. You know, we will see. In the meantime, not a whole lot of Ozzy news going on, Dan, but we do have the upcoming Billy Morrison album. Uh, he's supposed to announce details. He said first week of January, uh, discussing the details of his new record. And he's already confirmed that Ozzy's at least on one track. So at least we have that to look forward to. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait. Gods is one of the best Ozzy songs on anything that Ozzy's done with other artists. I mean, I think when we did our our show, it was one or two for you, Josh. I can't remember, mm -hmm. but it was definitely top five for me, and it's it's amazing. So if they can get anywhere close to that, I think we have a pretty gut, good gut feeling they're going to be doing one of the classics, either not classics, one that's been around for a while, you know, Crack yeah. Cocaine or Mr. Armageddon. One yeah. of those two, I think it's going to be it. I prefer, I'm looking for Mr. Armageddon, I think Josh is looking for crack cocaine. I want crack cocaine. <laughs> Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah, I I think Mr. Armageddon but, just sounds like a great Ozzy song. And for sure. Me, and it sounds like a rocker. To me, crack cocaine, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is just a blues song, but I could be wrong. Yeah, and I'm not big on the blues. So, and you know, the reason we believe this could be the tracks is Billy on another podcast, and it, it's escaping my mind right now what it was called, but he had mentioned it was a song that he and Ozzy had written while way back and that Sharon said, well, Billy, maybe you should use that for your album. This is an awfully good song. Like don't waste it. Don't you use it on your album, which is oddly enough. I'm going to take a little credit here for myself in the back. I had messaged Billy Morrison on a, one of his comments on one of his posts on Instagram two years ago and said, you should put these tracks on your solo albums if Ozzy right. isn't going to use them. And Billy responded and said, tell, and said, tell Sharon. Do you yep, remember that? I he do. said, tell Sharon. I'm like, you tell that? Sharon. You're the one that knows them. Like, you're at the house <laughs> hanging out. Awesome. And then sure enough, Oz, Sharon told him, put those on your app or one of those on your They may be both on there. Who knows? Fuck. If both of them are on there, it's going to be excitement, dude. And that here's would be amazing. I mean, yes. And here's part of why Dan and I are so excited about it. These are essentially Ozzy solo songs. They were written for Ozzy's fucking next record. These right. are not like Billy Morrison's. They, they're his too. He wrote them with Ozzy and, and Steve Stevens, but they were written to be Ozzy songs, not Billy Morrison songs. So that's why it's like these are full blown, essentially Ozzy solo tracks if we can get them. Yeah. Well, let's be clear. Gods would have been just fine on an Ozzy record. Like absolutely. That that song is as good as anything Ozzy's done in years. I mean, it's fucking amazing. So. If the quality is anywhere there, and like you said, these were meant for an Aussie record, these should be incredible. Because we know Sharon wouldn't release them if they weren't great, right? Nope. That's just, we know that. Yeah, I think at this point, she just knew too that, you know, Aussie's moved past them a little bit. Not too yeah. good for him, but just he's moved on. He's done two albums since then. So, and he's writing another one. And he's writing a third. Yeah. So, so use them, Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully All right, man. We have, um, sorry, you got it. Uh, go ahead, man. I was just going to say we have no news on the recording and writing front. I mean, I think they're probably in the process of writing, like Jack said, but nothing new. And, you know, yeah. unfortunately, that's what I'm really keeping my 
ear and eye to the ground as yeah, like absolutely. news on um, the process of the next record. And Tony Iommi for New Year's done his video. He's getting breast becoming a, a a thing for him, like a tradition. And he did mention he was writing new material. Mm -hmm. We don't know what for. Is that for the new Ozzy album? That's you know, been part of the rumor, right? Maybe an Ozzy Iommi record. So time will tell. Who knows, man? That would be awesome. And I, I definitely yeah. thought the same thing when I saw it, right? I like a lot of people hey, did. Who's he writing yeah. for? I know they're doing, you know, in, in Ozzy, non Ozzy related news. That is, let us throw a shout out that they are finally releasing the Tony Martin box set this year in May. I am yep. a fan of all eras of Black Sabbath. I think Tony is a Sorry. god. We all do. And and I really love a couple of Tony Martin records. Like, I think Cross Purposes, Tear, and Headless Cross. Those three records are absolutely incredible. And, yes. of course, I have them all originally um, on CD and a couple of them on vinyl. But I, I, I can't wait to get full-blown re reissues get them all on Spotify or Apple music and get yeah. them back into the streaming world because they're great records. I, I think they're overlooked, especially cross purposes. When Skeezer came back and, and did a lot of writing on that record, it is absolutely a classic black Sabbath record. Yes. And just fun fact on that one, he thought it was going to be called Iomi Butler and it was pissed when it came out as a black Sabbath record. I don't know that I knew that. Yeah. I just finished yeah. his book. We should probably do I a whole episode on it. I got it. If I'll just read the damn thing. It's yeah, yeah, right. Sitting right here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Josh, but, uh, reading, please. We just got him out of the <laughs> out of the, <laughs> the 12th century with his computer, so hopefully he'll but, start reading again here. But yeah, cross purposes is my favorite too. I mean, it, it, I put it right there with, with. I think you know Tony Martin just didn't have the personality of Ozzy and and Ronnie James Dio, you know, so it kind of gets overlooked. But when you go truly listen to the music, it stands up to you know to not to the Ozzy era. Let's get real, but. Right. I love this stuff too, man. So well, yeah, it's exciting news. And this is what we talk about all the time. Uh, Tony Martin is actually incredibly talented. His range is incredible. I just don't know if he has a diverse enough voice for him to stand out from all of the incredible singers. And I think right. that what makes Ozzy so great. It's why I probably like Born Again so well, because nobody sounds like Gillen. He sounds so mm -hmm. distinct on that record. But, you know, and it's kind of my knock on Dio sometimes. Sorry, people. But I think a lot of people sound like Dio. A lot of people sound like Tony Martin. Nobody sounds like Ozzy. And I and I think that's what really sets him apart. And I think that's kind of what the holdback was a little bit with Tony Martin. It just he wasn't, you know, individually, you know, individualistic enough. Like his style yeah. was just very common. The it factor, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's exactly. kind of my thing, like, you know, American Idol and all those shows, that's always been my issue. It's like Janis Joplin would have bombed on American Idol. Can you imagine? Right. But she, her character, the character in her voice is what made her so great. And that's what Ozzy has, is the character. Is he hitting, he hits some pretty high notes, higher than he gets credit for, for sure. But it's it's the character, you know, the character of the voice that, that really matters. You know, it's like, I was, me and Valerie, we, it always struggle sometimes it's a funny thing to watch on television. And sometimes you want on like something that's light to where you can have it on, but you're not really paying a whole lot of attention. So we started watching The Masked Singer because Sebastian Bach was on there. I know, but I thought, you know, Ozzy Osbourne would be recognized within 15 fucking seconds. Not even. On a show like that. Three seconds. I mean, yeah. it, first few words out of his mouth, like, oh, yeah. fucking Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, it's, you know, and that's what makes him fucking great. Dude, you couldn't have said it any better. That's exactly why he's great. And it's, that's why I love John Lennon. You know, I've got yeah. my little Beatles shot out there. But those guys just sound like nobody else. And I think that's yeah. why they are so iconic. And, and I do think that's what makes Ozzy so great. You are so right. If Ozzy was on The Masked Singer, it would be like one word and be like, oh, that's yeah. fucking Ozzy. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. What they should do is get some kind of Ozzy impersonator. And that way they never they keep guessing Ozzy, but it really ain't Ozzy. <laughs> little Ozzy. We'll get a little Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he sounds just like Ozzy, but he's three foot tall. What the shit? It's yeah, exactly. Ronnie the dwarf. All right, man. That said, you ready to get into this week's topic? I am. This was a really difficult topic for me this week. Yeah, I actually I'm... done some like thought. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe this, folks? Josh has actually done some I've homework. Not, he's not winning. Yeah. I think because he knows he's on camera. So, you yeah. know, he's got he's to show that he's prepared. That's right. Look at that. Beautiful. Look, all, look at this gray. Look at all this. <laughs> I know. Me too. I actually shaved clean. I got rid of my beard today. Um, nice. But yeah, this is a great topic. Josh, why don't you tell the listeners what we're talking about today? So today we are discussing Ozzy's guitar players' top guitar solos ranked. I'm not sure how exactly we decided to title it. It's been two months ago, but it's something to that effect. 
But we put a couple caveats on there. We thought, let's go with the classic. We're going to do Randy Rhodes, Jakey e. Lee, Zach Wilde. You know, Gus is our guy. Everyone knows we love Gus. But he was only on one album. Uh, Watt played a lot of guitar solos on the past two records. You know, you have you know, your moments slash, of slash, whatever. Songs, but yeah. we let's go with the classic Ozzy. Now, that said, the Zach Wilde portion, we did go all the way through Patient Number 9. Those are Zach Wilde guitar solos on an Ozzy record. So they, those all include, uh, which made Zach easily in my opinion the toughest one to, de- to decode your top five how about you yeah i think actually zach has some iconic solos that i just cannot miss on this list to be honest the hardest thing for me is i had six randy solos and i just had the hardest time to get it down to five that was the yeah. hardest part for me it's six tough. that i just couldn't budge off of and i had to just throw it's darts tough. on that five and six yeah so, so yeah. If i can just explain real quick what we're going to do is we're going to take randy jake and zach and we're going to rank their five best solos each. So we're going to have a list, three lists of five. And then at the very end, we're going to take those 15 and each of us will rank our top 10 Aussie solos based off of those 15. So we can't pull on the Randy 15. solo that wasn't on the list. Cause then, you know, I know Josh over here. Be let's, all Randy. let's just be real. Look right here behind me. It'd be yeah. like, you know, so we thought it'd just be a great topic and fun and really a great way to look at the different styles of guitar players. Yeah. Just yeah, a little bit different topic, so I'm excited for it, man. Yeah, definitely. All right, so let's start with Randy. I mean, Randy doesn't need any introduction. Randy, you know, obviously starting his career with Quiet Riot and has such an incredibly unique sound and a lot of wham- a lot of whammy bar in his stuff, a lot of tapping in his stuff. He kind of infused classical with uh, some blues licks. You know, uh, Children of the Grave is a perfect example of that off the tribute. Oh, that's another thing, too. We didn't include any of those because that would probably been the top of my list. It had to be an original song and not a B-side. We will go ahead and give Children of the Grave on tribute the honorable mention because that guitar solo is fucking Oh, badass. yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yes. So, I mean, obviously, Randy changed everything. He changed the game. Him and Eddie Van Halen, pick your poison. I think those are the two most iconic guitar players heading into the 80s. And I, and I don't know anybody that would disagree with that. So yeah. Eddie changed the, I'm sorry, Randy changed the world for Ozzy. And I think a lot of that came to his solos. Absolutely. We've said it on the show a million times, you know, a, a, a composition inside of a composition. Right. You know, it, it just, they're, they're their own thing. They, they, they live and breathe on their own. Yeah. And not, another thing I love about Randy, and I don't know anybody else, I'm sure a lot of people do this, but nobody does it like Randy, is the triple track guitar solos. And you can clearly hear them. And, I, and you know, I love it. Now, Tony used to double track, but he used to play two different things at the two same time. Yeah. It was very strange. I didn't, I am not a fan of that. But yeah. Randy would triple track the exact same solo. Let me tell you, some of these runs are so fucking hard. And the fact that he could play them exactly the same three times really is a testament to what a god this sounds like was. one track yeah yeah it it's, sounds like one track unbelievable another thing that randy did that i think doesn't get discussed a lot and it really is something that it doesn't seem like such a big deal to you hear it wrong it's the double tapping on the on the taps two 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 whereas most people tap one at a time yeah yeah yeah. and yeah. a good example of that is if you go watch jakey e. lee play crazy train on the, the us festival he single taps right crazy and it sounds so fucking weird because it it's does. not the double tap and it's such a simple thing but i don't know is there any other players you know that really have ever done that not too much i'm sure there are but yeah i guarantee so someone's done it but yeah. randy pretty much always double tapped he double tapped on flying high again yeah um and he's the only one eddie never really did that i think no. that requires some precise fucking speed though to do that shit too man. yeah 100 percent, man that's a great point absolutely great so all right so let's get into our list so don't do your honorable mentions until after the list because it kind of gives away what's not on the list is that fair agreed okay gee we're always in sync man always i didn't all write right. any in your honorable mentions but i got this it's all yeah good. exactly i got the same thing i didn't either all right so i'll start my number five randy rhodes guitar solo this was a great experience for me and i'm gonna talk about this when i'm done by the way all right so my number five is the just mentioned flying high again okay and, not bad and you know if i could talk a little bit about the solos or should we talk about them after we're done because you might have yeah, it go ahead yeah right. yeah but go ahead all right so the thing I love about Flying High again is not just the tapping part. It's actually the runs he's doing before the tapping part. And I just think that guitar solo is so iconic because it's 
two completely different, even though it's not over the same riff, it's like totally two different complete takes on that riff. You know, and I love the way that solo came out. It's incredible. And I know a lot of people love the tapping part at the end where he's going up the neck, but I absolutely love the first half even more. It, there's just some incredible runs on there. Yeah. I love it, man. Yeah, playing high again. Uh, we'll, we'll get that again later. <laughs> <laughs> My number five, a little bit low for me, to be honest. I thought this, this one might be a little higher. But when I really, you know, just thought about them in my head and put it all together, number five for me is tonight. Okay. Uh, one more thing we wanted to throw out a small caveat. We decided to do by song, not per solo. So, like, Great tonight time. has two guitar solos. It counts as one. It's a guitar. It's the solos for that track. So, um, you know, the first solo, of course, is it's nice, epic, Randy. It's, it's typical. But the one everyone discusses always is the outro, right? The long outro that Randy scratch tracked. You know, it's been discussed so much that it was not a written sit down, you know, write out, think out this solo. He improv that and didn't have time to go back in and properly write one. And thank God, because it's so fucking iconic, man. That solo is so amazing. Good. And it's the one that everyone's you heard the story many times turning up the radio at the end, trying to hear every last snippet of Dude, he it. He is Bring shredding at the very, very end. Oh, he's shredding. shredding. Oh my the, that, god. That that tapping like section at the very end sounds oh. so fucking unique and cool. So much that shows you just what a god he was. That he's just in, he's just doing he's just ripping. Just ripping. So, I will tell you that first solo is probably my most played Randy solo on the guitar. Like for me personally, I play it all the time. I've never learned it. Oh, it's amazing. It's such a great composition. It's such yeah. a fun, amazing. There's so much feeling in that solo. And that's the key here. The mm -hmm. ending solo is so iconic. And you know, he's doing all that open uh, string tapping at the beginning, but there's so much feeling in it. And the combination of feeling and shred is that is the epitome of it. Is that last That's solo? The epitome of Randy Rhodes. <laughs> yeah. In all honesty, it just is. It's the ability to play with feel, but fucking rip the whole time. You know, that's where Ingve Momstein and those guys where they fail. Is it. to me yeah. is 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 the, the the feeling. But yeah, that's that's my number five man uh, tonight. Something tells me we'll hear more from that one on you also. I think so. All right, my number four. Also from Diary of a Madman is the very underrated S-A-T-O. And I think if you're a guitar player, and I'm positive about this, if you're not a guitar player, this might just pass you by. But if you're a guitar player, I think you realize the brilliance of that guitar solo. Everything from the, the F-sharp run-up, uh, he just has so much feeling and composition in that. Again, he's shredding. And I love the ending, too, where... He the way he comes out of that guitar, guitar solo back into the the B chord, dun, dun, you know it, it's just perfection, man. There's just so much greatness, and that is one of the best composed solos of all time. Is yeah. SATO amazing? And it's like essentially all like down picked. Oh know, yeah, like, you got to be a guitar player, I know, to understand what we're saying. But like you know, as a player, you will kind of tick 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 yeah. tick 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 just for speed. Tick, 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 that's all awkward. This solo is fucking blazing. And Dan had hinted to me about one. He's like, I got one that maybe won't be. And I said, it's SATO. I just yeah. knew he's like, well, how'd you know? I said, because it's fucking blazing. It, it is. It, it's blazing. It don't sound as fast to the ear as some of the runs you'll hear in other songs, but it's the way he's picking it down. Yeah. It's just fucking so quick, man. It's, 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 it's fire, man. Good call. Thank you. My phone keeps shutting down. I have to keep opening the damn screen. Oh, back come on, up. get professional. Ah. You've been here before. So number four for me is Revelation Mother Earth. That guitar solo at the end takes me to another fucking stratosphere. And I don't know that it will it will never age for me. It just won't. That song plays up. It's almost like the song Black Sabbath. It's got that slower for so long, then it finally plays into that heavier, faster moment. But when that guitar solo kicks in, man, it takes me away I, I can't almost can't put it into words how that and it's such a again tasteful you know it, it, it's not that it's so lightning quick that one's not as lightning quick it's awesome harder to play than it's, awesome. it's hard to play it's, <laughs> it's hard to little play. moments you know and the simple the, the pull off that's so fucking tasteful oh. man no that's so i don't know tasteful. no i'm not i'm not doing that pull that i'm talking about the oh. uh like the uh where he 
is I can't remember the frets like twelve open, seven open. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's fucking. That, that is such a cool idea, and that solo takes that song. I mean, imagine that song without the solo. No, you couldn't. You know, it kind of be. I'd say it'd be kind of boring, right? But yeah. that solo transitions the whole song. The song Black Sabbath without the last ending would be like, ugh, what was that? It never really did anything. Right. That moment makes the entire song fucking killer. Yeah, it's called Scary Dreams. Scary Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> <It never does. laughs> uh, hey, so let's talk about that solo real quick. First of all, the trills at the beginning of it, oh my God, it is absolutely incredible and so iconic, the opening of that solo. And I think Don Airy's keyboard solo is so fucking good that Randy was like, dude, I, I gotta step up here because yeah. what, what came before it is really, really good. He does that little Ingve lick too that, well, I shouldn't call it Ingve lick. Ingve does it a lot, but it was a Randy lick where, you know, do, 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 where he like keeps going back to the same note, you know, and alternating mm-hmm. between just brilliant. So classically composed. It's definitely one of my favorites and one of the best. When that really quick sent, dun, 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 dun. it's almost like you're in trouble. Like, oh, fuck, it's coming. That was one of the heaviest fucking things I'd yeah. ever heard in 1981. Oh, my goodness. 80, 81 for me. Uh, and all the way through to the after part, you know, dun, 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 you know, oh, the yeah. whole, dun, 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 dun. it's like we're in oh, trouble now. We're getting out of it. Oh, fucking. Yeah. So goddamn good. Yeah. This is that is Randy Rhodes personified to me. That, it is. that track. I thought was your number four. Yes, sir. My number three is Over the Mountain. Now, it's so iconic, and there's a lot of flash going on in this solo, but for me personally, I don't think there's a guitar solo ever written that made me want to stop and say, I want to play the guitar. That That's why it's so high on my list, because it was just so personal for me. I love the stops, and you know, I, of course, love the beginning of the solo, too where he's doing the little Black Sabbath riff. Mm -hmm. And then when he does that, and that part's tricky to play, dude. You know, where he's he's the 12, 12, 11, 10 part. That's harder to play than you realize. And that part is my favorite part of the solo. And and they, of course, bring it back at the very end, which is so killer. But all those stops and him going crazy on the whammy bar. But it's just so iconic for me that I, I think it's, it's just so in again, I'm gonna use the word individualistic. It's like you hear that guitar part, you know, holy shit, I'm listening to over the mountain. That's how no easy it is to spot. It's it's just incredible. Yeah. So rather than piggybacking you on this one, I will go ahead and tell you my number three is over the mountain. Hey, hey, hey. We'll, we'll just go ahead and, and ride this out. Again, and we've we've said this a lot on the show. One thing about a great guitar solo that really can take it, if you got a great guitar solo and you want to go one level up. Have a kick-ass rhythm behind it, right? Oh yeah. The over the mountain rhythm, like you mentioned, the stops. Dun, 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 oh yeah, yeah. Dun, dun. Dude, you're just like, oh, I got chill bumps <laughs> right now incredible. talking about it. They're right here. That makes his playing just that much better. So kudos to the rhythm section, the Bob and Lee for just you know they're killing it, man. Killing it. But uh, like you mentioned, you know the, the opening section, the tritones with the Black Sabbath. That, yeah. Just so iconic and cool that a that that even happened this right. coincidentally, right? Yeah. I mean, how amazing! Cool. But for Randy to have the foresight, what I love about it is like, you know, you got you know, down on the the, the lower end of the, of the the frets, you know, three five or three five four, where you can do four what four six five depending on what tuning you're in. Um, I've learned it in both ways. I had a guitar book back in the day that taught me how to play it in standard tuning so yeah me too. which one should be they happen to you t- probably yeah. a bunch of people listening so it's now for years i'm like which one is it again i need to do if i'm in drop from from down a half step yeah <laughs> so it's like i always had to think about it. it's fucking me up for eternity but um what can you say man i remember reading once in a, in a guitar magazine where they said uh it's they mentioned the, the crash of, like it's like a hell like an airplane crashing with these dive and i thought that's some bad phrasing dude that is bad <laughs> like Think that out before Come you on, say dude. that. Dude, dude, you know, you know, it's funny in standard tuning, by the way. Dun 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 dun. dun yeah. Dun, 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 that part's easier to play in standard tuning. It's actually more tricky the real way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 When I learned so, in standard, tuning, like, oh, it's not so hard. And then I was like, oh shit, it's it's a little bit harder than I thought. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. But man, it's such an iconic fucking solo and just everything about it. the dive bomb section though is just the bomb it, yeah. it, when you're a, a, an impressionable teenager he's he's been in the fucking oh, yeah. neck dude you're just like god this it's is the, amazing what the hell? yeah amazing all right so my number two is so i've listened to all of these solos in the last two days incessantly and only one 
has given me like straight up chills. That's it. One. And it's tonight, baby. Of course. It's yeah, of course. I, I what else can I say? Tonight yeah. is iconic for me. I think that outro is one of the greatest things ever recorded. And thank God Randy didn't have time to go back and re-record it because to me that is magic. And I can't believe that is his scratch track and him just playing. I mean, and he would have tampered for sure. Had oh, he had yeah. time, he would have tampered. No, no doubt about question. it. It's the greatest ending of any song ever. That, that, yeah. It's fucking incredible. So that's great. But like you said, also the first solo also can't be overlooked. Oh you no! Mentioned that earlier, the feel yeah. of it, and I agree that that's such a such a great great track, man. So my number two, uh, this one is the, of all my list. I think come in higher than I expected any song to. But okay. when I really thought about them, I thought, man, I just love that and i'm kind of been on a kick for it but it's flying high again awesome and i never would have thought i'd have went that high with that one until i really dove in but for all the reasons you said earlier it has all the pieces it's yeah. brief enough that you know it doesn't outstay its welcome which brandy never really did but still um i i do prefer the tapping at the end that's that's my jam that's my section man i love that it, it's something that now that george lynch is saying he showed to randy and that randy I won't say stole, but used, you know, right. well, who knows? Maybe who Randy knows? has all borrow from each it's, other. It's well known that they, well, they borrow. And it's well known that Randy really enjoyed Jake's or uh, George's plans. So, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty well known. Randy preferred George over Eddie Van Halen uh, on the scene. Wow. So it's, you know, um, but yeah, man, for all the reasons you said earlier, it's, it's got all the parts. I, I love the energy of that song in general and uh, flying high again. Number two. So my number one is very obvious. If anybody knows me, it is clearly Mr. Crowley, the greatest guitar yeah. solos of all time, period. And that goes for both solos. And that's it. I don't even have to say anything. It's the greatest yeah. thing ever written, Mr. Crowley. Yeah. And you guys already know I'm with him, Mr. Crowley. I mean, my goodness gracious. We've discussed it with fucking Gus G on our show. The, the hook of the song, the song's still on the radio you know, 40 years later and the hook is the fucking guitar solos. Yeah. So, I mean, Agreed. how could it not be? I mean, the, the fucking guitar solos are fucking marvelous. Everything about them. Um, you know, for oddly though, my, like my, what's your favorite part of the guitar solo? Either you know, part of Mr. Crowley. Oh my gosh. I, it's probably the, that intro to the second solo. I just mm -hmm. love it. You know, well, that's, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, Go past that. Like, what's your favorite section? It's got all these sections. Like, there's like yeah, 10 it's, sections that you're I like, don't know. Yeah. I, I love them all. I mean, they're all incredible. You yeah. know, I love I the love run the opening. He does this 13 10, 13 10 run in the first solo that is wicked hard and wicked yeah. fast. You know, yeah. uh, that, that's also one of my favorite parts. I, for some reason, have always loved near the end of it when he comes down to the, to the low notes. Da -da, da -da, da -da. I, for some reason, I love that section. I love to hear how different players play it. Yeah, well, the one and, and I don't know why. Part, holy shit, yes. that's so hard. And uh, Jake always had a pretty good spin on that part. I, yeah. I've always liked the way he played it a lot, but I've always loved that. And you know, Mr. Crowley's the song that I think is the standard. You know, I, I remember when when Zach would bitch about Dave Grohl being on Ozzy's writings for Ozzy. He's like, let's hear Dave Grohl play Mr. Crowley. You know? <laughs> right, that's always the one. Yeah, that's that's the standard. So. Not trying to spoil the rest of the show, but clearly me and Dan have a boner for Mr. Crowley, as yeah. I think most of our listeners do, too. So real quick, before we move on, I will have to say this was a great exercise for me, Josh, and I'll tell you why. You know, I was shocked to see four out of my five selections are from Diary. And I know Randy prefers all of the, the, the uh, Blizzard stuff. So it was shocking to me that I was so infatuated with the diary solos. Uh, Revelation Mother Earth was the sixth song I, I just I wanted to fit in. So, you know, remember yeah. I talked about that, that was the hard part for me. So I, I, it kills me. Revelation isn't on my list because yeah. I agree with you that that one. It was either that or flying high again. I just I couldn't figure it out. We were very similar. I had SATO. Yeah. And Revelation. Uh, but th it was very eye opening that it was four songs. Diary one blizzard for me. Yeah. What was yours? I, I totally get Mine was a three and two diary. Yeah. I, I think Randy'd right. be very happy if he knew that, you know, 40, 40 years, years later, later you know, diary, yeah, yeah. his diary solos are so iconic. Yeah. Agreed. Totally. So I'm happy with him. All right, man. That said, let's move on. Mr. Jake E. Lee. The man, Jake E. Lee. Obviously, Jake recorded two Aussie albums in the 80s. Iconic. Bark of the Moon and the Ultimate Sin. One thing that's really cool about Jake 
is he didn't use a whammy bar. You know, he had a lock, lock nut. So, you know, when he had to do some of those Randy stuff live, he was, he did some cool shit live. If you guys yeah. hadn't seen to emulate, uh, he even had to do over the mountain live without the whammy bar. And, you know, he does a, a, a really good job without having a whammy bar to be perfectly honest. But I will say this about Jake. I think he's the most underrated guitar player here. And I actually think Jake's solos might actually even be the most difficult to play. And that's not a slam on anybody else, but Jake has got an iconic style. Some of his reaches are undeniable. And I don't, I just, he doesn't get enough love. And I think Jake's guitar solos and his playing is unparalleled. And I think he might be the most complex Aussie guitar player. Well, he just said. Yeah. I'm a guitar player also, and I agree. If you said, hey, play me some Aussie shit, I play less Jake than any of the other guys, and it's because it's more awkward to play and harder to play. Yeah. A little bit different tunings even. Uh, yeah. You know, he's, he he pulled different tunings and shit. So it's like Jake's definitely – and it's it, it's not so much – it's just more unique and different. It's not so traditional the way he plays guitar. It's, it's hard to explain, but um, I love it. <laughs> why don't you start this one off i'm, I'm really excited right. to see your jake list because I, I had a feeling our randy list would be similar agreed uh i think my number five is gonna be the one that shocks you the most and i don't know why it's even on the list other than it's just always spoke to me okay now you see it now you don't hey i love it it almost made my list i shouldn't have said that okay but cool yeah i fucking um, love it, it I, I love more than anything the way it opens up that slower lead in to the lead, to the lead, to the lead solo. I love that. Um, I just love the tone of it. I feel like Jake has a thing for this one also, because he really, if you listen to the Red Dragon Cartel stuff, he emulates that solo a lot in his newer yeah. material, I feel like. Like, I think he kind of sees that as his his sound also. Um, but again, the unique style of Jake is just, it's just a different type of animal. He's not shredding really in it. You know, it's a, the little slides and bends and stuff that that's what jake does but i love the i'm over here like like that's just that's it man i still think his guitar tone is way better on bark at the moon man it really is i just love it and i know i don't want to beat a dead horse but god his guitar sounds so good on bark at the moon it could even been turned up to be honest but uh yeah it's a great call my number five might shock you. So I, I, for some reason, I dove into Jake first. I don't know why, but like once we started this process, I was just like, fuck, I'm, I'm going straight to Jake. I was just really in a Jake mood. But my number five is Secret Loser from The Ultimate Sin. I absolutely yeah. love that guitar solo. I think it's a perfect blend of melodic and shred. And, you know, he's just got some really, really great iconic parts to it. It's a lot better than I remembered. I was just like, holy shit, how can I not put Secret Loser on the list? It's such a great yeah. guitar solo. I think one of the shining moments on that record. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's moments you go back and you hear it and you kind of like, you overlook it for years and years and years. Right. And when you really listen, you go, fuck, man, like that's yeah. killer. Um, you know, there's the part I, I love those. Wanna, wow, wanna, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's just such a, you know, it, it's just so Jake. It's it's iconic. Go ahead. Yeah. Sounds just like it. <laughs> <laughs> My number four is Lightning Strikes. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna be uh, waiting for this list. When I when I really I had a feeling it would be different on Jake because Jake's very like even killed really. They're all kind of like right there. They're like you know, um, the one thing about Jake, the one knock when, when I was doing my list and comparing all three of the guys, Jake's are the ones that are a little harder to recall in your head. Yeah, like that. Agreed. You have to kind of think about it. Like I kind of had to lead in with the bridge into the solo to remember them in my head whereas for a lot of rain like randy's shit you can instantly oh crazy solo, da, da, you know what i mean it's yeah. just so easy to remember but not not trying to knock them just you know they're a little bit but um lightning strikes man i i just always like that one the lead um the solo i wrote a little bit of notes that i wrote the solo leading to the riff i think again the rhythm means so much to the guitar solo and coming out of the solo into what it goes into when that song's solo was building up to the end, he goes back to that riff, dun, 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 dun. you know, he's just holding those notes out. I, it's it's so iconic, great. man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, love it, man. Um, lightning strikes. So my number four has five, count them, five guitar solos, and that is 
Rock and Roll Rebel, baby. Oh, okay. You're getting all the intros. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's so many <laughs> in there. I consider, yeah. you know, leads because they're, they're, they're more than filled. Yeah. Five of them. And they're all And we great. went whole song. So we said whole song. So, yeah, yeah I mean. Absolutely. And I think they're all incredible. I mean, coming out of the bridge into that, into the slower guitar part is probably the most iconic moment of that song for me. I fucking love the guitar solos in that. Hats off to Jake. All of them are yeah. excellent. And you have to go to the original version, not the weird remaster one that, that cut off a couple of ones, which I do think they put the right one back on Spotify. And I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. so that, that was very pleasant. I just found that out when they released the 40th anniversary of Bark. But, yeah, uh, when they first released those, it's like, fuck, what the hell like instantly, that? the first yeah. lady, on the, you're like, what the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> this is terrible, yeah. The solos are so good. They just took them and put them wherever on the track. Like, I think times. they were demo tracks. I think they put the scratch tracks up by accident yeah, is what happened. they may have. Yeah. Um, shock that one's. That's. I feel like that's a little low for you. On really. That. So that has me a little bit excited to see what the future holds. My number three is Secret Loser, which we just hey, discussed earlier for you. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, just the energy, man. Like you said, it's got a good mix of energy and emotion for yeah. sure. But um, the second half, that last half coming out of the solo, yeah, fuck, that's he what is I was on trying fire, to emulate. man. Yes, <laughs> on fire. That's what my notes say. Second half is on fire. On like, fire. I absolutely love it, man. That's awesome. Yep. So my number three is really, really, for me, I think the most complex solo maybe on this whole list. And it's going to surprise you when I say this, but it is blazing fast. And if you ever watch Jake play it live in the Salt Lake City oh. show, it'll really open your oh. eyes to how fucking good this guitar solo is. And my number three is Center of Eternity or Forever for our English friends. This guitar solo has it all for me. And it's probably the highlight of the song. It, the riff behind yeah. it is incredible. It's fast. It's moving. And he's got a couple of licks in there that I just, I'm like, holy fuck, Jake doesn't get the credit he deserves. It's so hard. It's so hard. Man. <laughs> I've tried to play that solo, and it's just beyond me, man. It's, it's and then throwing them in live, this you know, as as riffage, you know, in the middle of the song with those with those licks, man. Like yeah. said, and he's doing that without so a rhythm guitar track behind him too, which is even yeah. cooler. So I'd have to say, if you guys. Really, really pay attention to the guitar solo in Center of Eternity. It's absolutely incredible. So my number three, Center of Eternity. I think that's a great call. It's not on my list, and, and now you're making me second guess that I didn't think harder about that track because it, it really is uh, – it speaks well for Jake, right? It's, it's a good representation of who he is as a player uh, for, so that, for, for metal because yeah. Jake's this major league blues side that's totally different also. That he, I think he kind of prefers, honestly. <laughs> My number two is Rock and Roll Rebel for all the hey. amazing reasons Dan said earlier. Um, I love it. Guitar solo, iconic fucking bridge, guitar solo. Yeah, like, exactly. That's the shit it's that the we best. fucking live for, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and like good. you said earlier, the, the second guitar solo coming out of the bridge, oh. that slower part at the beginning, dude, is just so fucking good, you yeah. know? Absolutely. Never not. see the real me. Oh, that's one of the of all time. And and that's what's so amazing that you know you think oh guitar solos rank you're gonna think shreddage that's not really what we're looking for at all. No. And I, I don't think it's what the world's looking for, right? It's not. Yeah. Um, it's got to have that emotion and that feel, and that song has it kind of like Mr. Crowley does. It has that emotion and feel of you know solo bridge back into the solo, and um, Jake two thumbs up so my number two blew me away when i listened to it because i didn't even think it was going to be in my top five and I'm so curious man yeah and this one for me is all emotion it's funny randy's number two is also all emotion for me as well you just clicked it, 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 it i thought about putting it in mine it's so simple but it's perfect it's perfect and it's perfect. it is killer of giants is that what you're saying? Oh, I thought you were going to say so tired. No, that is a great one too. Killer of Giants guitar solo, I just think is so iconic. It's so emotional. Mm -hmm. He perfectly, you know, he is doing some of the coolest tapping I've ever seen. And you got to watch him play it live on the Ultimate yeah. Aussie or any of the, you know, shows from that era. But he's doing like, he's tapping here and he's like moving. It's, it, it, it's such an iconic. He's freak. It's fucking incredible. And I just think Jake composed maybe the second best solo since it's my number two spot. Uh, I think Killer of Giants is very overlooked and it's just iconic. And even though there's a part of me that was like when it speeds up that I'm like, oh man, I, yeah, he could almost be shredding here. But it's kind of cool that he doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, yeah. because it, it kind of makes that 
more melodic, emotional solo that much better for me. And more right. tasteful. And more tasteful. He, he, he yeah. didn't go the easy route of just shredding. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. the easier thing to do as a player. You right? The oh, shredding's the yeah. easier I thing got to the do. Same just... licks pattern. We all do yeah. the same fast licks that I can yeah. just do, but that's much easier to do than try to, to yeah. something. Rather than just doing another pentatonic scale, he decided, you know, to do something yeah. like that. So yeah, I I love it, man. Yeah. So um, I, Killer of the Giants for me is is really special. I like it. And so tired, I was almost on my list for that reason. It is. It, so tired may be the simplest guitar solo in Ozzy's catalog. But it's so good. But it's so perfect for the fucking song. So, that is my honorable that's what matters. mention. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll throw it on there as honorable mention for me also. So number one for me, Dan's clearly going to go with us on this one. It's Bark the Moon, right? I mean, God damn. Damn it. It is God. so good. It's damn. so fucking good, yeah. man. There's and so it, many parts to it that are just like mind blowing, you know? Yeah, I still can't a, get that rundown right at the end. I was gonna, say, yeah, and 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 in the 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 second guitar solo, that opening section, Jake's come out publicly and said even Zach don't play it right. Right. I, I mean, <laughs> I cheat. Yeah. But Jake plays. Yeah. What's my this going on and on about Jake? One thing about him too, he's more fun to watch than to listen to too, because he is such a one. He's a showman. Oh, he's fucking hell. incredible. I mean, you know, when you say, well, they could have had George Lynch, and George is a showman too, but Jake smokes him there, I believe. Jake, to watch him live, and Ozzy's pulling his hair and kicking him, and he's flipping and playing with his thumb, and he's just, just watch him play that outro solo of Bark the Moon on that 84 tour, or it could be, you could see it on the Ultimate Ozzy. Him playing that, he stretches so fucking far. His hands must be ginormous. Sometimes he stretches stuff with his thumb. He's not yeah, he uses his thumb yeah, sometimes. He's his thumb. I'm like, how the hell can you do that, the dude? fuck is that, yeah, dude? It's I mean, it's just fucking unreal. But both solos are fucking A-plus yeah. out of the park solos. But that outro, man, God. It is. God, that outro. Not to give anything away, but it's just, it is the most iconic thing outside of the end of Mr. Crowley. I mean, yeah. it's like, and... Also, if you're like us and you dive deep in this shit, the way Jake would play it live, I don't prefer it over the studio version, but I love his his live solo also where he changed it up a little and made two different sections out of it. Yeah, he actually it. adds a little like melodic part at the beginning yeah. of it before he goes into the shredding. Before just, he goes into the main, yeah. the, the, to the riffage of I like of the it live. I'm glad it's not on the studio album. But exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I prefer the studio album cut the way it is, but when you go see him live, that is fucking cool. Yeah, great call. So, awesome. Yeah, man. So my number one, clearly, Bark at the Moon. It, yeah. Just, yeah, without saying. So we weren't as far off as I thought. I was so excited to see Secret Loser on your list, man. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. So my breakdown on that one was three Bark and two Ultimate Sin. What do you got? Uh, My phone went out. I had to keep looking. Uh, I course. have uh, three Bark and two Ultimate Sin. Hey, just like me. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. We were closer than we thought. So. Yep. This is a tough one. Now we move on to the man, the myth, the legend, Zach Wild. I mean, Zach is iconic. We, I mean, pentatonic king, let's just call it. And I think I called Jake probably the most complicated. I'm going to call Zach the fastest. I don't know if anybody sure. rivals his speed. I mean, up and down the, you know, the neck. And I, one thing I love about Zach is he is incredible using all six strings, which I don't think a lot of guitar players do. I sure could use work on that. You know, I, I like maybe the bottom four strings a little bit too much, mm -hmm. but, you know, the way Zach uses the whole neck is incredible. For sure. And, you know, even the whole guitar, he uses all the pickups. Or a lot yeah. of guitar players will put it down in the treble pickup and just run all day long. Zach, he, if you watch him play a solo, he'll switch pickup position four times in the fucking solo. I mean, yeah. just. You know, the iconic thing, sometimes I'll just watch Zach play on his, you know, Instagram page or I, I just. I sometimes think he's the greatest guitar player to ever live. And I know that's sacrilege, <laughs> but if you're a guitar player and I don't understand how people shit on this guy sometimes, cause I know when I watch Zach play, I'm just like, I, is this guy for real? Like, it's like, it's, he beats that fucking guitar into submission, man. He does. And, <laughs> and there's no overdubbing. No, I mean, he's just a natural God's gift guitar player. I, I just don't know how else to say it. Well, you're talking about a guy, though, that can go out and play War Pigs with Zach Sabbath and do it for 15 fucking minutes and not repeat itself. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm out of licks 90 seconds into a fucking improv solo. 90 <laughs> seconds? That's pretty long. 
<laughs> I mean, it's like this it's guy incredible. goes and yeah. goes and goes. I remember one time I was recording a solo I'm really proud of. He's like, well, didn't you already do that lick? I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'm doing it again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. You know, Zach doesn't repeat himself. It's Zach incredible. is fucking, he's a god. They're, yeah. they're all three gods, man. They and really are. No question. And, you know, Ozzy's ability to hire and pick people. And sometimes it might be happenstance, like Tony Iommi. But he's right. always managed to have these amazing fucking guitar players, man, yeah. that just. And I love the story with Zach. We all know it, that he sent in the tape. And Ozzy said, oh, he's a Randy clone. And then, obviously, you know, got the call to, to actually do the uh, audition. So, awesome story. So let's run through Zach real quick. I think this is the one where we – I don't know if we're going to differ that much because, I, like I said earlier, I think Zach has some iconic solos that are must – must have on this list. There's one not on mine that's oh, iconic. No. Oh, It's boy. happening. I, I, I went crazy. <laughs> All right. I did not go crazy because I just think they're undeniable. Well, one is not on mine. I wonder which one well, it is. Uh, Right. One thing I want to mention real quick too was I it's an old interview, but I saw a cool interview with Rudy Sarzo recently where he was comparing Jake and Zach. And he was like, you know, Jake was the perfect guy for the time. He said, but Jake saw himself as a peer of Randy Rhodes, someone on his level. He said, where Zach came in as a fanboy. And right. really that helped because he was such a fan of Randy Rhodes and Jake and Tony yeah. that he wanted to really honor that. Whereas Jake saw himself as this the next guy, you know. And I thought that's kind of an interesting little statement since we're discussing the two right now. Love it. Go first, man. I went first last time. All right. My number five from Osmosis, of course, is Tomorrow. I actually think the guitar solo in Tomorrow is incredibly overlooked and underrated. It's got some of the coolest feelings. The opening of that guitar solo gives me chills every time I hear it. It's Zach with full-on emotion. He does some blazing runs. He does the classic Zach unison bends. There's just everything I want a Zach solo is in tomorrow. What can you say, man? It's heavy as fucking goat balls too. It is incredible. This is such a heavy song and his, his mood matches the song really good on that solo. So I, I got to go with you on that. Okay. Nice. Not on my list. I'll go ahead and tell you that's uh, uh, a good call. I know. And but your number five is not on my list. How do you know that? <laughs> because I know what I I'm telling you right now, what your number five is going to be. Go ahead and tell us. Huh? If you it's, if you nail this, I'm gonna shit. What what is it? Nothing feels right. Nope. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Good call though. My number five is junkie. Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah. And I don't know why I've always had a boner for that guitar solo, man. Just always have. I love it. And love it's it. full of it's just so full of we're talking about Jake and the unique thing. To me, junkie is unique for Zach. Like, it's just a different sounding Zach Wilde guitar solo to the point that one time on social media, listen, if you reach out to people, they'll respond to you. We, I asked Tim Palmer on social media, I said, is that Zach's guitar solo or did Joe Holmes write that? And Zach played Joe's solo because right. Joe wrote the song with Ozzy. And he, Tim Palmer responded and said, that is 100% Zach's guitar solo. He wrote that. And the, the reason I ask is it just doesn't sound like a typical Zach solo in the slightest. And I think it's even cooler live. That whole na 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 amazing. I can love that, dude. That is a great love it. Great guitar solo. That is a great call, dude. I I just like the uniqueness and the variance of how different that solo is. So number five for me, junkie. Love it. So in that vein, my number four is gets me through which I think is incredibly iconic. One of my favorite guitar solos ever, to be honest. I love it coming out of the bridge. It's just, again, and the end solo too. My God, the end solo is so great on Gets Me Through. I actually think the guitar solos on Gets Me Through takes a pretty good rock song and makes it great. Because the bridge on Gets Me Through is unbelievable. It's just- Best part of the song. Yeah, yeah, best part of the song. But with that guitar solo with it, makes it even better to me. And I think that hats off to Zach because if he, he's not playing on this song, I think it's a good song. I actually think Gets Me Through is a great song. And it's a lot of that because of that guitar solo. I agree with you. I agree with you. Gets Me Through, I will say it's not on my list. But I we will say – two down-to-earth songs, though. It's pretty, I, pretty cool. I will say that it was on my list. And as I worked through the process, it fell off. So okay. honorable mention this area for sure for me. Uh, number four for me, for a lot of the same reasons you had uh, Rock and Roll Rebel. 
number four for me, and it's kind of what helped bump <laughs> gets me through, is Road to Nowhere. Good one. Uh, the fact that Zach is playing that most melodic, that is a solo that serves the song as well as any solo in Ozzy's catalog. It shreds some, but it serves the song, and it, it's da -na 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 -na. it's just such a memorable guitar solo. Really fun to play, by the way, if you're a player. It's yeah. easy and fun to play. Um, the outro guitar solo, too. Don't overlook it. The outro where he starts just shredding a yeah. little, starts getting Incredible. a little more of the vibe there. Yeah. so fucking good. Uh, but it's just full of iconic, memorable, emotional guitar playing, and that's why I love it so much. So, uh, gets me uh, Road to Nowhere bumped off gets me through. Yeah, it's awesome. I can't argue it. it, it I I had a feeling we were going to differ the most on Zach because that is not I on my too. list. You know, yeah. but he has the biggest catalog to choose from. Which... I mean, even the new shit, man. I mean, Evil Shuffle may not be on your list, or maybe um, I don't. But like we said on several episodes now he's shredding on evil shuffle so even good. the new shit he's shredding yeah. so there's so much to choose from for zach it made his was the hardest for me for that reason yeah by far he i did him last because i knew it was going to be the hardest <laughs> he did him <laughs> <laughs> all right my number three again very similar to my number four but my number three is the iconic perry mason from osmosis and you just can't touch it I mean, I'll just speed this up and say Perry Mason is my number three also. Hey, hey awesome. It, it, it's just incredible, man. It's, it's perfect. Coming out of that bridge. Now, that's one of the greatest bridges of all time right there. Uh, but, you know, the run at the end is so overlooked. And it's very, very difficult. And it's almost a little mm -hmm. buried. I wish they would have just, you know, a little louder. But he does a mm -hmm. run coming out of that guitar solo that is just, I remember the first time I heard it, I was just like, holy crap. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. I think it's one of his most iconic, memorable guitar solos. Incredible. Perry Mason. I agree totally. And again, has all the parts, right? It opens up with the slower, the beans. Then he's got picking. Then to the shred. There it is. Then again, like I said, the outro section where it goes back to the, and I see you, my friend, and he's shredding over that. That's the riff you're discussing. That's the part I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just that, that's that over the top moment where you go fucking hell this is yeah, yeah. crazy i'm know? not gonna play guitar just, anymore <laughs> yeah perry mason is a fucking beast and it is that, a beast. i would say one of zach's harder to play i don't know a lot of zach's i don't know a lot of any of them but if i i listening to him i'm assuming that was one of the tougher ones i've never i've actually learned a lot of perry mason but i look back and think was i ever playing it right because i remember when i was 15 jamming that in the bedroom and convinced i'm like shredding that solo yeah. and i'm like I, if i could hear it back it'd be so <laughs> bad <laughs> i think awesome. i got those bands right at the beginning yeah right Maybe. hey we could do the unison bands um <laughs> all right so my number two is absolutely for me the iconic miracle man i just okay. think it is incredible i mean it's really my first time ever hearing zach all of us you know i remember the single before and i just was remember blown away and if you play it correctly, you know, when he's doing that little transition uh, after the dun -dun 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 -dun, you know, no, 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 he's just, it's faster than you guys think if you really watch Zach play, because you can play that cheating and get the same vibe, but it's not quite right, you know, like kind of Jake mm -hmm. talks about. But if you play Miracle Man right, it is a very difficult guitar solo, man. Holy yeah. shit. And I just think it has everything in it. It's got some of the best, fastest pentatonic work I've ever heard in my life. And going back to the No More Tours 2 tour, you know, when Zach broke that out during his guitar yeah. solo, and he would do the solo to Miracle Man and Perry Mason right. and, and, and Crazy Babies. but um, Two out of three ain't bad. Very, very classic. It, it, it really, if you said, let me hear one solo to describe Zach, Miracle Man's a good place to, it is. to begin for sure. So uh, he, he came out of the gate swinging. My number two from the same record, it is not Miracle Man, though. Would you want to take a gander at which one it might be? Devil's Daughter. Devil's Daughter. Yeah, that was, so, that was an honorable mention for me. For sure. It, Devil's Daughter is a song that, I'll be honest with you, for 30 years I listened to that track and thought, that's a cool solo. Mm -hmm. On to the next whatever. And then Zach puts out that video of him playing it. You know, he, does, he does those videos on the social yeah. media all the time where he's playing these songs and you can watch him play them. And when you actually see him play that song, you go, holy fuck balls. <laughs> like, who the hell can play that, let alone rock that? Yeah. That so too much hard to play. I don't even want to begin to try to learn yeah. that shit. Amazing. I, I have a thing for when guitar solos transition rhythm. 
to another section, and yeah. that one has a great when it drops back to the other rhythm what at the end song. of it, and he's just still fucking ripping, man. And that that solo again, it does have it, it does have taste. It's not just complete shred, but man, oh. when you really watch him play, he is fucking going oh, bonkers. Dude. When he does the unison bends up, you know, oh. and then he does that. I love it, dude. But he also does some chicken picking on that solo, which I never realized before. And then forget it. I can't do that. You watch the video. Then you go, oh, my God. You know, like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that's a great call. So I'll be honest. It was between Devil's Daughter and Tomorrow for my five spot. And yeah, it was just they were both right there. And today I was must have been in a heavier mood because Tomorrow made my list. But that's a great call, dude. So it brings us number one. one. I mean, which means we have the same number one, and we both left off the iconic solo that we oh, we both left off. Mom, I'm coming, I'm home. coming home. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I left off same. for sure. I mean, obviously, number one is No More Tears. You know, it's Zach's most iconic guitar solo. Talk about maybe the best written solo of Zach's career. Talk about maybe the most iconic outro of a guitar solo coming out mm-hmm. right back into that bass. It's it chills it's it's fucking incredible and there is just no other answer than no more tears yeah, yeah. that slow intro man it, it gets most like what, was, what we were talking about like the song black sabbath earlier or when you do that slow intro to build up to that and then the end with the blazing f- fast you know the run up the fucking neck it, no more tears is the perfect guitar solo for zach wild and uh, you know it's one of the most uh, well, let's be real Rolling Stone, all those, they normally list that as a top guitar solo of all time in rock and roll, hard rock and music. So, absolutely, No More Tears for Me is Zach's best guitar solo. It's got everything you want in any guitar solo. It's got the emotion, it's got the feel, it's got the speed, it's got the fucking fluff, it's got it all. Uh, accompanied, of course, by the piano and such in, in, in this, at the beginning of it. It's just fucking perfect, man. Yeah, fucking I mean, perfect. We've talked about it ad nauseum. No More Tears is about as perfect as a song can get. Right. Yeah. I mean, and everything. It, yeah. Especially, and especially for Ozzy. Like that's yeah. if really as much as we all love the Randy shit, if you said play me one song that says what Ozzy sounds like, like no, no more tears could be the yeah. track. And it's a, a seven and a half minutes. Yeah. And it just doesn't feel it. No. Or seven minute song. You know, I mean, even for the intro to start over again, like you said, after the solo, it, it, it doesn't bore. No, not no. at all. It's so great. Matter of fact, when I hear that, that single cut where they take that out, I I'm like, the fuck. Yeah, it sucks. Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, and like, what the fuck is that? Real quick before we move on to our finals, but you know, I love the bye bye goodbye because that is straight up Beatles. You know that. Bye yeah. bye. You're right. That part. Yeah. Oh. Well, and, and and same for Road to Nowhere in the uh, 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 yeah, so good. You know, so yeah. fucking. The production on No More Tears is an a plus man i mean Dwayne yeah, Barron, sure. Bell, i mean we just ta- we just covered it, it but i was listening to sin today which is one of my other honorable mentions barely missed my list and i was just like god the production is so great on this record we could have 15 honorable mentions with zach there's so yeah. much great material there yeah nothing so real nothing quick feels right also honorable mention uh, for sure yeah for sure so real quick before we uh, do our final thing honorable mention i think i think pretty much what's not on your list is my honorable mentions what's not on my list is your honorable mention yeah right I'll say, real quick for me sato crazy train was one of the iconic songs that brought me into ozzy and randy road so i had to yeah. throw it on there and gets me through uh, those are probably not so tired yeah you know those are probably i don't know for me is an honorable mention just because i, I don't know and goodbye to romance yeah goodbye to romance too. yeah yeah well how about just randy is it honorable? <laughs> I mean, let's just be real. We love them all equal. We truly do. But man, when Dan and I discussed the parameters of doing this, we're like, it's got to be on our list because if not, we'll have the ten greatest solos would be one of Zach, one of Jake, and eight Randy Rhodes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not a knock. It's just that Randy's like he's one of the greatest of all time. Well, they all are, but yeah. You know what I mean? God damn. All right. So why don't you do your full list, or do you want to go back and forth? Yeah. Um. I can do my full list. Yeah, and then I'll do my full list. Yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. So number 10 for me is Perry Mason. Number nine is Rock and Roll Rebel. So we have one Jake, one Zach. Number eight is Devil's Daughter. So we have two nice. Zach, one Jake. Then we get to the Randy Rhodes section. <laughs> and it's tonight is at number seven. Number six, Revelation Mother Earth. Number five, Over the Mountain. Number four, Flying High Again. So wow. we have a section of Randy, but then my top three Ozzy Osbourne guitar solos of all time is each guy's 
and I didn't do this on purpose. It's truly how I feel. Each guy's signature solo. So number three for me is No More Tears. Number two is Bark of the Moon. And number one is the amazing greatest guitar song of all time, Mr. Crowley. Great list, man. So your final was five, Randy? And then all five Randy. And then I had uh, three Zach and two Jake. Awesome. My list might surprise you, actually. That was awesome. All right. So my number 10 is Gets Me Through. My number nine is SATO. My number eight is Perry Mason. So right now I'm two Zach, one Randy. Then my number seven is Killer of Giants, my first Jake entry. My number six is Miracle Man. My number five is Over the Mountain. My number four is Tonight. And then, of course, my top three. I couldn't have said it any better, Josh. Number three, No More Tears. Number two, Bark at the Moon. And number one, the greatest guitar song of all time. And I am not exaggerating, Mr. Crowley. I really feel Mr. Crowley is the greatest guitar song of all time. I but I also feel that Bark at the Moon is the second greatest guitar song of all time. And I'm not being biased. I really, no, that, I agree. that's how I honestly feel. I'm probably I love, biased, but. I love Bark at the Moon, but you take the guitar solo out and it's another great Aussie song, but it's not right. like the iconic Aussie song. Right. It's, and I truly, and I, I, I know you're the same way. I didn't pick those as my top three on purpose. It wasn't no. like, oh, let's give everybody their love. No, those are the best three. Each guy's signature moment yeah. stands out. You it's know, pretty amazing because they are, each of them are known for those guitar solos, right? Yeah. I mean, Zach is known for No More Tears guitar solo, and it is clearly the top three best Aussie guitar solos. And really, you say top three best Aussie guitar solos of all time. I know for you and me, that's like saying the three best guitar solos of all time. So, yeah. you know, that that's exactly how I have them. For sure, man. For sure. So, you know, a little bit off topic, but I want to throw this in here real quick before we sign off today. One thing in the news section we didn't mention that did kind of come out a few weeks ago. Sharon said on the Osborne's podcast that they are they have 35 plus concert videos that's going to go up on Osborne's media over the next year. So that's something to look forward to. Some of these old iconic shows. How many? 35 shows. She said we have 35 concerts. So oh, concerts. Osborne's media is going to start doing. They're going to start releasing all of Ozzy's archive yeah. concerts and shit. For some reason I said 35. Thousand. I was like, "What?" No, I think like, <laughs> I think she, I think she did thirty-five. 35 I think she did thirty-five concerts. concerts. Yeah. But still, yet that's a lot of shit we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Well, you but know for sure also, Salt Lake City is going to be on it, and, and if I can get a cleaned-up version, that's my favorite show of all time. That's what so I was going to say. Cleaned-up version of Salt Lake City. Dude. You know, oh. if we can get those, you know, Salt Lake City is going to be on there, and they're going to be cleaned up, remastered, cleaned up, perfect. We're going to have Us Festival, which is Jake's first gig oh. with Ozzy. Hundred yep. some thousand people is your first gig. Can you imagine that? Moscow um, Peace Festival, probably. All those will be on there. And some old Sabbath. You know, there's some stuff I'm sure we haven't seen before out there. So I just want to throw that out there real quick. We can see all these guys doing their thing in their prime, uh, you know, as these release throughout the next year or two. So that's something to look forward to. But, Dan, so, before we sign off, anything? No, I just want to say, first of all, it was great doing our first, well, I guess our second. But to me, this is our first official video show because Jack was a special, you know, thing so for me yeah, we didn't know we were going to do the video with jack until it happened it was like fuck it we got it let's use it yeah exactly you know? and i think it worked out so well you know yeah. i'm super excited we get to do this now going forward but definitely let us know what your favorite guitar solos are by the three guitar gods that we just talked about today let us know what you think of our lists i think we were closer than i thought we were going to be which is pretty yeah. awesome it just goes to show you how yeah. great these fucking songs are yeah, but agreed. yeah let us know what your thoughts are Make sure you're following us on all our social medias and try to be as interactive as possible. You know, Josh and I love to do uh, more interaction on social media. Absolutely. Like and subscribe. You know, again, the Osborne's Push, we've had a lot of subscribers and likers in the past two months. So we we appreciate all the new listeners. We really appreciate you guys turning on to us. Turn your friends on to us, man. It's, it's, that's awesome. But uh, Dan, anything before we sign off? That is it. All right, man. So until the next time, we will see you guys on the other side. fucking happen man hey we got it now Crazy. though i just uh, don't get it it's so insane it's like uh we can't do this without some major fucking malfunction yeah i'm just glad that at this point it's on your end and not my <laughs> end so hey, well, here's double good barrels news. for you hey like you said though it, we should be clean
going forward. I think so, yeah. man. I think so. That was a fucking hour of trying to – hour uh, – 45 minutes of figuring that shit yeah. out. Crazy. Yeah. But we got two new computers. We, we're ready to roll, man. I'm literally sitting in the light of my fucking closet, so I have enough light on my face so you, <laughs> so you can see me. It's like – Look at this. You can see the fucking sweat keep, on my fucking forehead. I keep a very dark room in here, so you know. Yeah, that's going to change. 